Are you interested in purchasing a bit of merchandise, my friend? Discretion, not valor. Discretion, discretion. I haven't been this pleased with a group of folks since the Cormirians sent the price of turnips through the roof during the onion famine. Hm. Being around this group too long is sort of like having the callum shite itch, isn't it? Except for the uncomfortable burning sensation and the rash. But still, I don't think I like your attitude much. You have all the makings of a nasty griffin, which reminds me. You need a bath. That's it. Time to move on. Places to go and all that. The way you're going, you're just going to end up like Golodon the Unmanned. And I didn't want to see that the first time. Well, now, this is a fine turn of events. I haven't led a party since, well, since Uncle Scratchy turned sick with the pox and put me in charge. He just didn't trust the dwarf, you see. Hmm. Hopefully this time works out better than the last. <sighs> It's long past time for turnip tea. A little rest will shake the stew from our eyes and ache from our legs. Ho oh, hum, ho oh, hum. Oh, look, did the grass just grow another half inch? Wonders. Beware! Your knees are mine! Prepare to meet your doom! <laughs> this isn't boring. I'll give it that. Ah! Don't forget to raise me. Uh, don't mean to startle you or anything, but all this blood spurting about is actually mine. Ah, home sweet home. Wait, I don't live here. Hmm, I'd wager the turnip market's making a killing today. Ah, this reminds me of the turnip sellers. Except Uncle Gerhardt isn't passed out by the turnip still in the corner. You know, I'd like the daytime a lot better if it didn't mean a griffin has a clear sighting from five miles away. <sighs> I've had this little problem ever since I was a wee gnome. When it gets dark, everybody glows red. Frightens a child something fierce. Don't yell. I can hear you just fine. Jan Jonsson, at your service. Uh. Pardon, turnip reflex. You need my skills, I see. You sound like Golodon. What? Is there a griffin about? Yes, yes. A standard tactic, that. Oh, I can do that. Got it. It shall be done with skill and care, if not brevity. At once, your worship. I'll do it for a turnip. You know, this reminds me of that time way back. I can't. I'm allergic. Well, all right. I'm not that allergic. I think we make a fine partnership, like Drist and Wolfgar, Elminster and Volo. <laughs> we should go into the mobile vegetable peddling business together. Take that, turnip hatin' scum! Buy Uncle Spanky's thumb! Not even a dent? I'd carry the world if I could, but you'll have to package it smaller. I'm out of room. I've nicked a bit from our friend here. None will see me now. Lost my frazzle. Apologies. I've set a trap for the feet of the unwary. Did I ever tell you the tale of the lobotomized orc, my good knight Animan? Virtue, eh, knighty? So you come from the winged folk, do you, lass? So, Valigar, how do you like being a ranger? Minsk, look out! Behind you! Ah, Minsk, tis truly a beautiful day, no? Harry, I have an idea for a play. So, Viconia, I suppose you must be a drow, eh? Well, Mageling, how goes the battle against all that is right and good in the world? Greetings, everyone. Sorry no gifts or souvenirs this time, but I'll keep you all in mind the next time I'm gone. Hmm. You know, this all reminds me of my dear old mother. Did I ever tell you of my mother, Valigar? Very true, lassie. You must work with potatoes. Well, Mazzy, you're really asking two questions there. Yoshimo, please. Jan Jansen's Flasher Master Bruiser Mate. They have a name. I'm open to all creative muses. Lately, I've been working on a turnip peeler. Nalia, dearie, you remind me so much of Cletus Biffalips, my second cousin thrice removed. Is there an epic begging for verse rattling about in your head, Edwin? Oh, yes, indeed. It reminds me of my cousin Tilly Fleetney's and the garden she had at the foot of a dryad tree in the forest of worms. I tell you, she went up expecting well-aerated soil. And did she get a surprise? Oh, yes, indeed. Indeed. Why, I remember it like it was burned into my memory with a flaming stick, which was very close to the truth, actually. So, you've returned. 
interested in making a purchase now? Ah, my old friend, you've come to retrieve me from my unjust imprisonment, I hope. There goes a truly evil man. Uncle Scratchy seems like a saint in comparison. Regardless, it seems that I'm once again out of the black market. Have you decided to pay the fine and free me now? Most excellent, my friend. Thank you for paying that tragically unfair fine for me. Well, by Aunt Petunia's beard. A ghost from my past? Looking to buy some turnips, perhaps? It looks like something serious is afoot. I'll have to be heading back to my home in the slums district. We once, I'm home. Please go and speak with my Uncle Gerhardt. Find out what he knows about Jaela's illness. You'll find him in the basement. May I remind you that we have to go and see my family. It sounds urgent. <laughs> some villains just refuse to die. Kill them once, kill them twice. It's like some bad play. Well, he is hoping for a decent ending. Whoa! This place looks just like... It reminds me of... This is just like that time I... Hmm... I don't think anything like this has ever happened to me before. Please, you must go and find out exactly what my Uncle Gerhardt knows about J. Ella's condition. I see from the look on your face that you've talked to Uncle Gerhardt. I should have better explained the situation. I fear for her life, her and the girl. You've met Velag now. What do you think? Thank you for everything. J. Ella is well. Hello, my friend. The girl has been saved, but only temporarily, I fear. Lissa has taken her daughter back to the man who abused her. There is nothing I can do. Finally, you have arrived. Let us return to the trail. So be it. You're a tactless bunch of idiots, anyway. I've more important things to do. Excuse me. You're too late. Jayella is dead. She wasted away while you were gone. Well, are we to separate on this note? Oh, my, my, my. I had the strangest dream last night, Minsky. I dreamt a wizard snuck into our camp while we slept and cast a spell that made you and I switch identities. Animin, my friend, I realize that I've been less than polite with you in the past, and I wish to apologize. Animin, I've been having such a lovely time and have thought to share some reflections with you. So, Keldorn, while we're on the subject of adult diapers, uh, you're getting on in years, aren't you? Mazzy, dear, have I ever told you about my Aunt Petunia the Ranger? Corgi, old pal, have I ever told you how much you remind me of my Uncle Uriah Twin Hammers? If you don't mind me saying so, Cerned, you seem a bit jumpy around me. Do I, uh, unnerve you somehow? Harry, could I draw upon your bardic prowess to help me with a little poem I'm working on? It's a tribute to our fearless leader. You know, Binky, I've been considering this plan of yours that you had with the Iron Throne and all that. Interesting ideas, but flawed. Nalia, my dear, you've been positively morose as of late, probably from studying all those scrolls. You remind me of Goladan. Prior to his addiction to poppy seed muffins, of course. You know, Jahira, in all our travels, your smile has eluded me. No, lass, I'm not hurt and the limp is not new. I've had it as long as you've known me. Tis a wooden leg, you see. Oh, don't get all huffy. It's just that at this angle, you look a lot like my Uncle Agar of the Tomes. Indeed? Well, I must say I've never looked at goat cheese quite the same way again. And neither did poor Gilbert, or any of his cats. Ah, finally, someone who appreciates my tales. A story about dwarves, eh? What's the matter, Minsky? Did you lose... <coughs> lose? <laughs> lose something? Your stepfather, eh? Was he a megalomaniac as well? Must have been quite a merchant. Was he into crate building, perchance? Everywhere I look, I see crates. Business must be lucrative. I was just thinking how much you remind me of my cousin Gabber. Ironic name his parents gave him, since he never said a word till the day he died. Yes, my dusky little margarita? What warning would that be? Oh, is it that time already? Well, you know, it's funny that this situation should come up. It's not something that I like to think about much, but... I spent a whole year as a god back in 03. Well, I found six coppers, an old chicken leg, and a full deck of cards so far. 
Quite the messy pocket plane you have here. Is it time to travel, or are you in for a wicked game of canasta? Against all my better judgment, I'll give you a second chance to change your mind. How about it? Two turnips and I stay? Three? Oh, what? Is it time to go already? Halt and go no further, layman. There be a grave evil here the source of which I have yet to find. I must fall back and regroup. I approve heartily of the path that has been taken so far. The good has been upheld. You must weigh your actions carefully, my friend. The path to evil is far shorter than you might think. I will countenance no further breach of virtue. I will not stand idly and watch as travesty unfolds. I have seen enough. Your soul is forfeit, and I can overlook this no more! I shall do everything in my power to keep this group safe and on the path of right. The spirit is willing, my friend, but this old and battered body demands rest. I am not one to complain, but surely I can be of some greater use here. Good is on our side this day! By Torm, I shall strike you down for right and honor! <laughs> the pain nearly overwhelms me. If you have aid to offer, I would gladly partake of it. A pleasant enough setting, although I've had little time in my life to pay proper homage to beauty. Where men gather, a bustle of chaos ensues. I would save them all if I could. Keep a wary eye about. One never knows the form that danger can take in a place such as this. Evil appears deceptively insignificant in the daylight. Torm the true, the brave, Fill your servant with courage enough to banish darkness and see evil wherever it may lie. I stand ready. You have a plan. I am yours to direct, my friend. Duty calls, I see. Yes? I await your order. Aye, as you wish. So be it. I pledge my service and my life, if need be. For the good, in Torm's name, I shall serve. I expected as much. I shall do my utmost. I have buried many fallen comrades. Let us endeavor to remain hale this day. We shall strike a blow deep into evil's heart. There is no more worthier cause. Storm, take you. You will fall yet. Not even a scratch. I can carry no more. I must drop what you gave upon the ground. The spell is lost. Am I to judge by your tone that you are sympathetic to our enemies? Shar is a perverse travesty, Drow. Her cult is seething with evil and bitter yield. She's a coven for the morose and pathetic. Hmm. I know it has not been the case in your experience, but not all magic is there to serve the darker gods or circumvent the good. I must say it was only practical. My mother was of noble birth and my father a ranking cleric. They say homecomings are like that. Of course I do, Eri. What is it? Young Anaman, it seems to me that you have been too long away from the fold. Perhaps this is a good time to continue your lessons. Squire Enerman, it is time that I had a word with you. I must say that you do not always act in a manner befitting a squire of the order. You must learn to show deference to your leaders and elders. Your fate has arrived, Sir Enerman. You are a squire no longer, but have now become a knight. Well done, young man. Do not let your removal from the order color your choices, Anaman. There is a lesson to be learned from this. Anaman, please remain calm. What I say, I say for your benefit. You are turning away from your god, Helm, and slipping down the path of evil. I cannot let you do this. Put aside your bitterness, Anaman, and talk to me. One must maintain constant discipline and remember the four principles of virtue. That is my motto and everlasting burden. I must say, ye bard, that I find the use of your musical abilities during combat to be most effective. Play on, I say. So this is home to your mysterious harpers, is it? I urge you to reconsider the sheltering of this trowel. However desperate be our mission, we make it worse by sheltering a demon such as her. Your time is done, Drow. I gave you your warning. I must say, Valigar, that I have watched you fight and have found you to be a most extraordinary warrior. How is it that you have not pursued something more important with your life? I understand congratulations are due to you, Valigar. Master Jansen. Are you so absolutely incapable of acknowledging the seriousness of our situation? As do you, Corgan. But alas, blades be far too lengthy for the vertically challenged, I hazard a guess. Truly, I am married.
I have a beautiful wife and two daughters. They are the joy of my life. Ha! There are countless books within our holy libraries where bored and dreamy scribes have penned petty blasphemies into the margins. Am I to judge by your tone that you are sympathetic to our enemies? If Athcatla were like this, we would swing from the trees by our tails and have barely enough wit to lash a stone onto a fallen branch that it might be called a hammer. Nay, sir, and I want not the lowly barbarism you espouse. Wizard, you've only a brief respite before I put your head in a bag and your body in the ground. What is the concern, wizard? I have done nothing to aggravate you. Minsk, stand down and calm yourself. Let it pass, Minsk. The fight is won, and we have survived. Do not let your rage defeat you. Calm your fury, Minsk. The battle is over. Let your friends tend to you. I take no pride in my wounds, only in the battle won. That I have the opportunity to sacrifice my body for right, that does not mean I wish to. My battles won unscathed are my greatest pride. When I have served the cause of righteousness, without a mark to prove my deeds, I know I am acting for the greater good, and not just my own foolish ego. There is no sorrow if I fall in battle. I am glad to be alive, but if my sacrifice inspires others, then it is worth my passing. I have no doubt that your rage over a lost friend inspires you onward, does it not? That it is, Minsk. Do not waste it, for life anew is not a right, but a privilege granted. I need not tell you to rededicate your life to fighting the good fight. I imagine there is little else you would choose to do. Aid is on its way, Minsk. Stand firm. Infamous? Miss Nalia, we servants of the Radiant Heart pride ourselves on bringing a little good into this dark world. And I can't say I appreciate Corgan's company or the crudeness of his tongue. But by the gods, one can't deny his prowess. A difficult life you must lead, my friend. Always having battle and worry thrust upon you, never in the possession of sanctuary. I miss it truly, the little that I have known of home and the order. Bit by bit and little by little, thus does innate goodness conquer the blood of an evil god. I know that you bring with you a troubled past and a painful heritage, but for all the friendship that is formed between us, I cannot turn from such transgressions forever. Welcome to the guild house of my order, old friends. Ah, it is always good to see you. How might I be of service? Oh, to taste the airs of home. It has been a long time since I have passed this way. Forgive me, but I have not been sleeping well since I was first reminded of my estate and family. Four days past. I mean no dishonor to you, but I must leave your side long enough to visit my wife and children at my estate. Ah, here at long last is my estate. The servants have tended to it well this past while. Ah, my sweet Vesper. How is your schoolwork coming? The priests are still kind to you for my sake? Nay, my love, we both yet live, and perhaps each of us more fully than before. Maria! Curse the dictates of honor! Oh, the very gods demand that I bring this case before the courts! Sir William shall be hung, and the love of my entire life imprisoned! There is no other outcome. A day has passed, and still we have not confronted Sir William about his crimes. I pray you have not forgotten my intention to reconcile with my Lady Maria. It is not a duty I care to postpone for long. Oh, my friends, I warned you that this strange viper's soul is now guarded by my honor. You have planted a seed in my brain, and already its roots course through every aspect of my flesh. If you will not go with me to seek out Sir William, then I shall go myself. Forgive me. I have no choice but to leave your side for a small time. These wounds of the heart can wait no longer for love's attention. Justice is on our side this day. And in Tyr's name, we shall be victorious once and for all. A place where the evil dwell after death, this place. I followed your call only because my duty does not end with the end of my life. Let us finish this here, if we can. You have come at last. I have been in such a state of agitation and... Please, 
I need the help of a good friend such as yourself, someone who will not judge me for my weaknesses in this. The deed is done. My Lady Maria rots in some dungeon's depths, and Sir William of Thorpe swings at the end of a well-tied rope. Hello. I am the bearer of good news. Lady Maria and I have made our peace. Greetings. I was wondering when you might come. Greetings. Greetings. I wasn't sure I should see your face again. But the gods work in mysterious ways, don't they? What brings you to the Radiant Heart today? Your evil ways disgust me. You should tread carefully from now on. I trust you wish to continue our journey. So it has come to this. I have heard the cries raised up against the ball spawn across the land, and I thought of you. I am pleased to see you unharmed. Have you a need, then, for an old paladin? Cerned, I would like to ask you a question, if I may. You strike me as a good man, yet you refuse to follow the rules of law. I find this paradox quite vexing. Mazzy, my girl, you are a halfling of most extraordinary courage. I am proud to serve beside you. Valigar, I have no wish to offend you, but I can remain silent no longer. You are a great warrior and a true defender of what is moral and right. May I have a moment of your time? There are matters of great importance I wish to discuss. Emoen, what? Are you pawing at me yet again? Do you think I do not notice? You are attempting to pickpocket me, aren't you? I doubt you'll care much for anything I have to say, Saravok. But have you considered this new life of yours to be a second chance of sorts? Heroism, he said. Cassius gives me more credit than I deserve. The days on the giant's plain were dark days, and the deeds performed darker still. Your observation is most astute, my good bard. I am indeed troubled by our current course. I am well enough, Jahira, though our circumstance gives me reason to pause. What in the blazes are you about, Jan? We were on no such topic. And as always, Minsk, you have fought with the righteous strength of many knights. Of course I believe that is the case. I could not serve if I lacked the faith that that was so. Why do you ask such a thing? Is it time for us to go? Call it the vanity of an old veteran, if you will, but I have the sense that great danger lies ahead for us yet. To become a power that would walk the plains at will, I cannot imagine facing such a choice myself, and I do not envy you the task. Were the choice my own, however, I would not leave behind my beloved Maria and both my children forever. I could not endure it. And the thought of dealing with the evil taint as you do, no, it would not be for me. I trust your tactical decisions, my friend. If you feel we must part ways for the moment, then I will go. Drink hail, wassail for all. I be curious, friends. I'm scouring for a band of desperate men to aid me in a gallant task. Lord, there'll be time for this battle another day. Aye, this be a grand enough lot. Mayhap I won't be needing to kill you all any time soon. <laughs> I've had better times drowning face first in gutter water, bleeding from every orifice, don't you know? You'd best change your tune. For me axe is itching for a swing or two, and I've been no likely to stop it. You're all piles of stinking pig's bladders. I'll have no more of this insipid lot. Aye, now this be more like it. The first to disobey me orders gets an axe in their skull. When the day be done, the day be done. I wish rest, no argument. If I've wished to sit about all day, I'll do it in a proper pub with an ale in my hand. Let's see what your guts be looking like. For time we got to business. Blood and glory. Now you die. Uh. <coughs> oh. Oh. Get me some healing, you blasted fool. Do it now. The blood turn gets in bloody forest. Uh, this carnage, the bloody tree huggers and daisy eaters. Uh, burn them all. And they think to call this civilization? <laughs> Blasted bloody humans. Shuddily made and shuddily maintained. But good killing grounds, nevertheless. Arr! 
tus too bright out. Where to put me ale? Darkness. Good for stalking and having your way with the lass, eh? Be quick with it. What do you want, growling? Me axe be bloody ready. Eh? Bark your orders already. What gives? A best be paid well for this. Hmm. I've killed for less. Aye, that be sounding right. Aye, I'll do as you wish. For now. And later I'll split your gut open. <laughs> Aye, the dwarf will bloody do it. Fine. It'd be neither decision I'd make. I'll do as you tell. But only if there be a good amount of coins awaiting. A skull breaker! Next swing! Blasted beggar's immune! I'll carry no more. It be on the ground if you want it back. Ne speak that vile tongue to me, black skin. If it moves, I've killed it, but if it be draw, I've tortured it for days first. Eurydice is surpassed only by your unskilled floundering on the field of battle. Stupid boy, now ya? You? You're over tall, beardless, long limbed, and lack strength. You disgust me. Be aware, Mazzy, of something long, hard, and low to the ground. You're free to toots and fondle. Child, no need to glare. Twas me axe I was referring to. That's a joke! You know, Mazzy, I'm a poet of fair renown back home. Here's a mere trifle. Have an elf knot in my neck from straining to admire the whole of your beauty, Mazzy. Calfskin suits your form mightily, girl. For a muddled long limb, Keldorn, you doth wield a clever blade indeed. Rainmaker, use your mumbo jumbo and make sure I don't rain when we're traveling in the outdoors. It makes me armor rust, my clothes damp, and my feet slosh about in my favorite boots. Valigar, you're indeed a dervish. If I didn't know better, I'd swear there was a dwarf hiding in the woodpile nine months before your man birthed you. Harry! Harry! Cease your whining! I swear on my father's cool cart you were one of them faves with all the blasted crying coming from you. You know, bag of tricks, he and I are nae so different. You fetch all with eye of Newt and Tug of Salamander. Aye, with battle axe and bloodlust. Ha 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 ha! Marvellous tale, gnome. Well told, well told. Only blight on you is that trimmed beard and that loathsome pointy pickle hanging off your face. Your combat prowess is a sight to behold, Minsk. You certain no dwarven blood runs through ye? That's a fine wooden staff you have there, woman. Tell me, you crack acorns with it? Or call some rare bit friends to frolic with ye? Well, there be the rarest of sights. Out of my way, brat! You there, elf girl. I'll be tired of your constant miscasting of magic while we be in the heat of battle. Can't you do anything right, girl? Quit your whining, winch. So you be tired. We care not. Sleep when death takes hold of ye, which would be a welcome respite for the rest of us. God knows. <laughs> Look at the sky, Missy. Your day's up and I'm still here. Long limbs. Look at them. Like grub worms scurrying away from the light of day. All avoiding pain. On the prowl for pleasure. Nay facing uncertain futures. Best all dead, I reckon. There not be enough critters in all the world to stain me, axe nearly enough. I've killed a plenty already, and I yearn yet for more. Come then, and face the S-dwarf. Aye, come! At least I'm no hypocrite, Anaman. There nae be a heart so holy that evil nae make a nest of black twigs in it. Balderdash, imbecile! I've more than a fair mind to tear ye a new dirt shoot, ye lion swindler. Faerun would be none the poorer with ye pushing up daisies. Your eyes wander all over me back while I battle. Do I meet your approval? I hope not. I find your nuts and berries approach quite feeble. Aye, I find pleasure in the feel of an inquisitive thief's neck bone breaking between my hands. The harder the conflict, the more glorious be your triumph, I reckon, spell chucker. What you obtain too cheaply, you esteem too lightly. Good fight! We're in an age of murder, child. Killing is our business. 
on business be good. You know, though you all be gutless, clumsy, and not too bright, this party is a sight better than me form a crew of delvers and near do wells Aye, so you'd still be interested in my proposal, then? I hate um. I hate the heat, the squalor, the desperation. Everyone has a silver tongue here. I hate the stagnant, lunt, tepid brew. Oh, friends, you'd hear me tell then? Fine then, lunt quaffers. I've put up with you fribbling long enough. I've work to do, and it'll not be with the likes of this girdle wasted loom crew. This tomb looks to be looted. The rank stinking bastards beat us here. Those scoundrels are. Dine on me, sup a cold steel afore I'm through with them. Damn, you've all taken too long. Ransack she is, looted she was. By the looks of it, me former comrades have painted Pimlico's finery with his innards. I say little has changed your candor, shagbag. Still a lant gulpin dirt shoot. Oh, bold warriors all. The sundial be turning on me appointed task, and I prevail upon ye all to hasten it. Thrice over their graves I'll be dancing, I swear, stolen from under me. I'll do the work of ferreting out where the blasted book will be, and those crack nuts taken away! A oh, pity it is. Ah, oh, well. Thus is the way. I just knows it. A southern tomb within the open cavern. Bloody old it be. That's one fine mess that I done cleaned up. They did the killing, but I ends up with the gold, the book, and the satisfaction of kicking their tails. <sighs> A good day. Dang and blast it over and over. Shagbag and them other dastardlies will be long gone by now. You're a fine one for words, wizard. But for all your pretty magics, we've killed you once. And will be pleased to do so again. Hmm. I felt the dragon on me foot almost when I died. And now, here we be. Fair enough. It'd be far better than anything I were expecting for an afterlife. So what musters your interest in just another bibulous dwarf? You've proven to be not worth me time. So I'm seen so long with a smile. May up we meet again. Though a blade will be me handshake. Good riddance. Back to the grind, eh? Are we off? Dang and bloody blast it! I swear I'll be thrice damned the way you yank me about from one place to the bloody next there since we met. What does you want now? Back, you there, pretty boy. Aye, I mean ye, animan. Here, look at my down today. Ach, I'd be wondering if I might talk to you, Valigar, just to pass the time, you know. Tis been far too long since our last battle. Yon, ya runty windbag. Tell me a story to ward off the boredom. And if you know what's good for you, it'll be about dwarves. Hm! Emo and you're an over lame excuse for a member of this party, and I'd be tired of exerting myself to protect ye. Next time, I'll let you perish, screaming like a ninny as you does. Ach, Saravak, you're a bloody killing machine, you are. Here, you wingless freak. You better spend some time practicing your spells afore the next battle. I won't put up with any more of your screw-ups. I've been resisting my urges far too long. I can hold off no longer. It's been a grand fight, eh, mage? Can you better cap a life than with blood betwixt the toes and the flames of hell itself? Ha-ha! I be needing to speak to ye about a matter of grave importance. Ah, Muzzy, we've travelled together, you and I, for such a length of time. You know, it's just a matter of time before we end up together, eh? I've a small question for you, lass, if you'll be so kind not to run off on me this time. Watch your step, gnome. If you make me angry, I'll bury the head of me axe so far up your backside, your breath'll smell like magic metal. Aha! I knew you'd give in to your heart sooner or later. So, what's it to be, lass? A kiss and a tickle now or later? Ach, the little booger's probably just cold. I'll fire up a pot of boiling water to warm his wee bones, and you just toss him right in. 
And then it's hamsters too for everyone. I'll just be trying to come to a reckoning about your nature, you walking ghost. The only time I stand downwind of a dark elf is when I'm looking to add to my collection of draw ears. But then I worry, you dark witch. Your time will come. What is it, then? Speak up. Hm. I may see the difficulty for ye. Take your power. You fought for it hard and well enough. There be no need to give it up, and no one worth giving it up for. And besides all of that, if ye becomes a power, ye can reward us all the better for following ye about all these months. I've had enough of your smell. <laughs> Some gold would be fine. Indeed. <laughs> Either I be bloody out or I be bloody in. Make up your girlish mind. I've got better things to do with me axe. I? Does you wish me to wait about? I can do it, though I hates to be left out of a bloody good fight. Time for me axe to be put back into action, I? 